when we come to the words of scripture, we have the unique privilege of reading the memoirs of men and women across the centuries who have all encountered in one way or another the living God. These biblical authors range in time from 1200 BC to 100 AD. They come from different geographical and cultural regions, and yet their writings show a remarkable degree of coherence and consistency. Does this high degree of consistency mean, however, that if we were to lay their writings out side by side, we would find them to be completely free of ambiguity or surface difficulty? No, it doesn't, and we shouldn't be surprised by this fact. Scholars have long known that absolute uniformity between texts actually generates its own level of suspicion, suggesting a plastic text that has been tampered with over time. Differences in texts actually support rather than detract from their authenticity. But what about those discrepancies that do exist? What can we say about them? Well, it might be helpful to group them in two different areas. So the first category might consist of those difficulties that are fairly easily resolved by a close reading of the text. So for instance, did Jesus speak at his trial or did he not? Matthew says that he did not, that he remained silent. John, on the other hand, tells us that when he was asked whether he was the king of the Jews, he answered in, in, in affirmatively. So which was it? Did he speak or did he not speak? Well, if we read further down John's gospel, we read that the chief priests refused to enter the Roman palace for fear of defilement before eating the Passover. When Jesus was speaking to Pilate, he was speaking privately. And we see this because John then further recounts that Pilate went out and spoke to the Jews who were standing there. Two different accounts at different times. There's no contradiction involved. A second category might consist of those areas where we as 21st century people demand more precision from the text than the biblical writers ever intended to give us. The biblical writers were quite happy to use paraphrase, summary, and a reordering of chronological events if it suited their literary purpose. They were far more concerned to recount the historical significance of an individual's life rather than full journalistic accuracy. So for example, John, when he writes his gospel, places the clearing of the temple at the beginning of his gospel rather than at the end. Now we know that it did take place at the end, as the other synoptic writers tell us, but John purposely reorientates it to the beginning because he wants to erect it as a little literary theme. He is much more concerned to tell us that just as the money changers needed to be thrown out of the temple, in fact, the whole temple system needed to be thrown out and replaced by faith in Jesus. It was a reorientating that was done purposely. Finally, we are left with a small number of texts that do indeed appear to be contradictory. Most of these have to do with numbers. Numbers are particularly prone to copyist error. If there's a slight degradation or hole in the manuscript, usually a word um, is easily understood if a letter is missing, but take a number, a digit out of a number, and it's much harder to reproduce that. Does this mean, however, that we have to throw all of scripture out because it is unreliable? Not at all, because ultimately our faith rests in the historical Jesus, in his life, death and resurrection, and not on the inerrancy of scripture. <laughs>